Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to paint a butterfly. So in this lesson I'll be using acrylic paint and try to keep it simple so that anyone can follow along. And whatever I paint in acrylic I do the same technique in with my oil paints as well. So you can follow along with oil if you would like to. So I hope you enjoy this little lesson. Okay, so I'm using some of this um, Michael's canvas paper. Um, some people get in a, you know, kind of in a rut with their painting and they wonder like what they can do to get out of it. Doing little uh, short tutorials like this is re really useful because you don't have to commit to, um, you know, you don't have to commit to a canvas or something that you think, oh, wow, I'm going to, you know, waste money and all my effort if I don't do it just the way I want. So I've got out um, some acrylic paint on my, this is a little miniature Masterson Stay Wet palette. So you put the wet palette paper on top of a sponge and it's really handy. Um, you can find links to that on my website. And um, out here I've got white. I put out some of this fun color from Utrecht called Brilliant Blue. And um, just because I thought for the butterfly, it might be fun. And then cobalt. This is uh, another fun color I use sometimes for shadows and stuff in acrylic. Just it's kind of a shortcut, the neutral gray, number five. And there's different numbers. So they kind of vary in lightness and warmth and everything. They have a whole series of them and they're super handy. You can underpaint your painting using this. Um, it's a perfect background color. And then I've got out transparent red oxide. I've got out some Indian yellow, sap green, transparent brown oxide, and some green gold, ultramarine blue, and some black. So sometimes I give my paints a little spritz even though the water is coming through there. And um, okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is in this um, demo, You've got the butterfly sitting on a tropical flower. I'm going to do one of those more contemporary kind of um, paintings where it's just the butterfly. I'm sure you've seen them. They're kind of popular um, just to have the butterfly with sort of a shadow underneath. So um, to start off with, I'm going to um, use something like this brown oxide just to sort of draw with. And a little water, little maybe a little ultramarine blue in the mix. And I'm going to start off with um, the center of the butterfly. So I'm just going to kind of mark out where his little head is and the little angle of between the head and the wings. There's a little bit of a 45 degree angle there. And then the wing kind of comes up on both sides. And I might mark out kind of where, how far I can paint this, you know, as I only, I've taped off this much space. So I can do that. And then I can kind of create the arch that I see there like this. And there's a little kind of curve. And then you've got the body kind of comes down like this. And you know, just sort of looking at the shape from my reference photo, I'm just getting this in. And then there's a shadow of really dark comes down to about here. And then you've got another angle, kind of where that wing goes out. And then there's sort of these veins that kind of come from the butterfly's body and that kind of gives you some idea of 
where things are going. So you've kind of got these two sets of wings. If you look carefully, there's one wing here and then there's a wing underneath. And that one comes, there's like one, two, three, four. That one kind of comes from this, that shape there. So I'm looking at that and gonna come down and it's gonna go round and sort of up like that. And then you see a bit of that other shape of that wing kind of coming like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, you know, I'm just, I'm not a real perfectionist. I'm more, I kind of like my paintings to be kind of whimsical and free, free styled. So kind of go down like that and then up. This is gonna come up and then there's that wing like there and there's a little mark that shows that and then you've got little antenna like that and so basically I've kind of drawn it out like this And like that, okay. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, you know, this wing could be a little smaller maybe if I wanted it to be perfect, but we can we can shape the wings with the background color later. So I think that's good for now. And what I wanna do next is if you look at the butterfly, there's a really pale blue and then there's these real warm, dark, almost blacky blues in here. Um, I'm going to get those in there next. So I'm just using a number four flat here to paint that in. So I'm going to get some of this ultramarine blue and I'm going to mix a little black in there. And I'm just going to kind of pop in where that darker bluey black color is. And it gets thin here and a little thicker here. And then you've got the edge You can paint it like that because you see there's some kind of these little little strokes that are coming off of the butterfly or you could paint it like more of a solid brush stroke like this so you could just go and look at the basic shapes and put them in like that and then you could lift your details out like that that might be easier So a little black, a little ultramarine blue, and you'll get this nice blue-black color. And then I'm gonna go do the same here. I think that's a little, a little easier to do. I always try to, in my paintings, I try to do things simple and quick to get the results, something, how can I get the brush stroke to do it for me kind of versus, you know, using a tiny brush and trying to make it happen through lots of brush strokes. I try to go with 
bigger, bolder strokes that kind of get you the same result. And I want to work on my own looseness in my painting. So, and I think, you know, everyone wants their paintings to look like they created it just, and it was easy and fun versus, you know, a struggle. So I think using simpler brush strokes gets you that look a little quicker than um, lots of little ones. So even if they're a little messier, um, it just, it creates a more interesting look. So now you've got your darks in there. Um, I've used the, I kind of painted in that light body with sort of a little more water, but it actually gives me that nice kind of um, grayish, you know, the light reflecting off its black body there. So I, I'll leave that and I'll just put some details in there. And that was just that ultramarine blue and black combo that get, got me that. So now that I've got some of the darker values in, I can kind of build up a little more of the blue versus the blacky blue. So add a little more ultramarine blue to this. And I'm just going to put in some of that blue that's a little darker right at the top of the butterfly. Just kind of put that in there, almost like a wash. And you can kind of bring it down here. Kind of the fun thing about using acrylic is you kind of have that almost watercolor effect if you want to. And you can do the same with oil, just put on your ultramarine blue and um, you can wipe it away a bit like this even. Gives you that nice look. And the next thing we've got to do is work on the light blue. So if you don't have Obviously, this is a strange color that no one really has. I just bought it because I was playing around with different colors that come out that are new. So you could use something like that or just use some cobalt blue and um, some white to get that lighter, lighter blue. So I'm going to just kind of work some of that in there just so you can see how I would blend that in. So I'm just sort of making my brush stroke. I'm putting my brush stroke in there like this and then pulling it towards the center of the butterfly and leaving the loose kind of stroke there just sort of blends it in. And here, and here, sort of like that. Get a little more white and a little more of that cobalt blue. And go for it again, just kind of work that in there. And I'm kind of going with the shape of the butterfly. And I'll just try that bright, brilliant blue Utrecht color just to see what I get here. If I add a little white to it, it has a little more of a, you know, a, tur a little bit of more of a turquoise -y, like a cobalt teal look to it. So if you have cobalt teal, just use some of that. Okay, so now we don't want to carry on this light down here. Because if you really squint with your eyes and look at the reference photo, this is somewhere between that and that, but it's it's more in with this midtone. So you don't you want it to look different than that. So don't carry that same highlight down. We're gonna we're definitely gonna use a, a light mix, but not that light. So we'll just add a little more, just add some more cobalt blue to your white mix so it's darker and maybe add a little ultramarine blue to it just to make it different. 
different blue, so a little bit more warmer. So I'm gonna just try that out. Like that. And just block that lighter, but maybe add a little more of your blues to that white. Okay, so now I've kind of blocked in those blues. And now that I've done that, I can go back with my black and ultramarine blue mix and kind of mix a little bit of water into it. And now I can go and blend back some of the black into the blue. So I can just grab a little and kind of pull that back into the, the butterflies. And it creates sort of a blending effect like that. Soften that up a bit and then go get your blue again and just sort of blend in using that blue. You can kind of use the edge of your brush and blend in some of that blue. I'll just zoom in so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. So I'm just taking the edge of my brush and sort of blending in some of that blue edge, just get some cobalt white. And I'm using a flat brush, so it's got, you know, kind of a more of a squarish edge. And just sort of blending that edge a bit. There, so now you see it's kind of blend in. Um, and now we just have to check our values again. So um, this edge is the top uh, of the butterfly. Same with this edge. So I'll go back with, I'll get some of that brilliant blue and white and make a make sure that that edge sits up above this edge. So you really can tell that it's, separate and it comes all the way up with a little bit of a highlight to the edge here. Like that and you can put a little more highlight on these. Okay, so now you can sort of see that edge has popped up and I might add a little bit of a highlight down here on that. And so now I'll zoom back out so you can see my palette. So another way to blend an edge like this with acrylic is this is one way working the paint in and out. But um, this, if you dry it, if I dry this a little bit, I'll just sort of dry that off a bit. Another way to um, do this is using like a glazing technique. So uh, you can use some, I don't see any handy here, but you can use some like liquid medium and mix it with your paint. Let me just um, let me just use some water for this one. So I'll just get some water, a little little bit of um, ultramarine blue, and so it's a very thin layer. And I can go and put that on the edge of the painting there, and that'll soften the 
the butterflies, the edge of where this light meets the dark there. And then go back in with your, your black paint and you can touch up some of those, those lines. Just make sure you're, you've got your paint on your brush so it's not too clumpy so that when you make the line, it kind of gives it a nice shape. And then the next thing we want to do is make some of those little white dots. So I'll switch down to a, I've got a number two, or you could use a little, you could use like a, this is, a, this is my oil painting brush, but you could use one of these round. So I could use this just get a little dab of the white paint and kind of add a little bit of those um, details to your butterfly. And then there's some little ones on the edge. Little dabs. Oh, and then up here, there's a nice white streak of it right here and right here. So, and so basically, it's not as hard as it looks. You just gotta kind of just gonna put some black in this, and then really kind of mark off those little or those little legs or whatever those are that come out of the butterfly and then put a few of those lines to show the body has those little little marks where that it kind of curves in and kind of darken just looking at the reference photo and darking darkening in some of those little spots. But this is a, a really fun painting. Butterflies are fun. And I'm going to um, use some of this gray um, just to show you sort of the shadow color. I'm gonna just put this in here. You can mix up a gray really easy using cobalt blue and some transparent red oxide and white as well. So this is sort of This is just sort of, I don't know, kind of fun to do. And then get some lighter gray. You can add a little blue to it. And some white. And I'll kind of put that around there. And then I'll get some white paint and just go and kind of blend it back to like a white background. Gives it a, it's kind of a contemporary style that I'm sure you may have seen. So I'm just getting some white paint. The paint around there. Kind of just to make the background look a little more interesting. And careful around there. Little antenna. And
And you could get a bit of that lighter blue and just for fun, put a few little splotches of that around just to make it look even more kind of modern. And then let's see what it looks like. Take away the tape. I'll probably give this one to my daughter who's 15. She'll really like it. And so with acrylic, um, it kind of dries darker. So you might come back at it again with one more highlight, get a little white and that cobalt blue that you know we originally made the highlight with and go maybe step it up a little and get that edge back in there a little just to it'll dry dark again so just put a little bit of that lighter blue back and there you kind of get it back a little and I'm sure it'll dry dark again but I can always go back a few times and add the little highlight to that. Um, you could uh, you could add a little detail to the head. There's just these two little kind of lines I see like that. Yes, that could be about as much detail as I want to add to those. And then now that I've got the shadow in, I can go back and get those little some of those little white edges that little tips they had. Oops, water dripped off my brush. Um, just get some of those little white butterfly edges and then you could put a few of those there's some of these with the brown oxide you you could add a bit of the brown oxide to the cobalt and white mix just so it's not a bright white and there's a few real faint it's got to be darker the value has to be a lot darker so just mix up something that's like a gray almost and you can put some of those little details there. And again, you notice I'm not I'm not going for, you know, perfect, it's just sort of a fun and um, happy little butterfly painting. So I hope this tutorial uh, goes well for you. And uh, if you want to try it in oil, you definitely can. It's actually, for me, it would be easier in oil than in acrylic, but I hope this is good for all you acrylic painters to try and enjoy. And I hope you have fun with it and I'll see you in the next video.